Patrick's Landing by Marie D. Henry, copyrighted, um, chapter 4, episode 23. For a long moment he stood where he was, watching her as she went to the last cow in the row and pushed on her rump to make her move over in her stall. She put the small stool on the floor and sat down on it. Leaning her forehead against the cow's flank, she rubbed her others gently with a clean rag and also the four fits. She tucked the rag back under her left arm and grasped two tits opposite one another and began to pull and squeeze them between her thumb and first and second fingers. After a few gentle pulls and pushes up against the cow's others with her knuckles, the cow gave up her milk and it flowed in warm squirts, twanging the bottom of the pail at first and then swishing into the gathering fluid. Then noticing that he had not gone to the house with the fresh milk she had given him, she said, without turning to look at him, Go on, Oswald, take the milk to the house. What are you standing there for, looking like a small boy? Do you have something you want to talk about? Her question startled him, and he stamped No, no, no. I was just watching you milking. She lifted her forehead from the cow's flank and looked at him, her blue eyes so much like his own, searching his gaze. Son, there is a lot of work to be done. The cattle and horses need feeding and watering. I would be pleased if you would help Leonard, Patrick, and Willie with that work while you are home. I will do the milking, and Amanda and I will have more time to do the baking for Christmas. She smiled at him and went on. I have a feeling there is something on your mind. Is it about the mare? She waited for him to answer while swishing the milk into the fast-filling pail she held clamped between her knees. For the first time since he had entered the warm barn, the smell of the animals mixed with the pungent odor of their urine and waste made him aware that the stable needed mucking out and clean bedding put down. He looked over at the horses on the other side of a two-by-four partition wall and noted that the mare had developed a thick winter coat. Gone was the shiny black sheen. He looked back at his mother. She was waiting for an answer to her question. There is nothing she does not know about the, her family, he thought. She knows when any one of us needs help with a problem. She reads us like an open book. Also wiped his forehead with the back of his hand. It was beaded with sweat, and not because it was warm in the stable, he realized. I'm 22, and the uncanny ability of mother's loving mind to understand and discern any need any of us have still unnerves me. It still makes me sweat as it did when I was a child and had done something mischievous, and she would look at me with those knowing blue eyes, his memory recalled. He wiped the sweat from the back of his hand on his coat before answering. Well, yes, Mama, there is something I would like to talk to you about, but not now. If you can give me some time this evening after the work is done for the day, that would be fine. She nodded her head knowingly, but did not speak. He turned and left the stable. When he opened the barn door, the cold from outside pushed its way inside in a rolling white cloud as it met the heat from within. He pulled the door tight behind him and ducking his head against the cold northwest wind, he started towards the house, careful not to spill one drop of the cooling milk. Despite his heavy clothing, the cold reached to his skin and started to shiver through his body. He reached the porch door and pushed it open and was greeted by Amanda. 
It's about time you got here with that milk, she scolded. He let her take the pail from him. He wanted to go into the house and feel the heat of the kitchen range on his cold, bare hands, but work waited for his attention. He was about to leave the porch when Amanda handed him a pair of woolen mittens. He took them from her and put them on. Thanks, he flung over his shoulder as he stepped out into the snow and sprinted towards the barn. Oswald reached the door to the thrashing floor, went in and stopped to let his eyes adjust to the dim light. His breath made clouds of white steam in front of his face, which made it even harder to see. Slowly, forms began to take shape. To his right was the ladder leaning against the hayloft. He went to it and began to climb hand over hand up the rungs until he reached the top and stepped over onto the hay which gave under his weight and sent up dust that tickled his nostrils and he sneezed several times. The end of this chapter. Thanks for watching.